Viewers, this is Dr. Kamar Chima, uh, and today, as I told you people, that I have started a new uh, English uh, current affairs channel or regional ch challenge channel, which will talk about the regional politics and the international politics. And for that matter, I requested uh, Major Gauravarya Saab. Major Saab, thank you very much uh, for coming on my new channel. Thank you, Chima Saab, for inviting me. It's a pleasure, and please accept my congratulations. I think this is a great beginning. And we are all with you. All of us are with you in this new endeavor, Chima Sir. Thank you very much, Mahesh Sir, for uh, giving his support for this. Uh, as I believe that we have been saying much on um, in our local languages in Urdu, in Hindi, uh, in Punjabi, and so many other languages. So uh, a perspective from Pakistan in English uh, language must go abroad because many people are unable to understand what's going on in Pakistan, particularly people in the West, because we don't have uh, English news channels in Pakistan. So people used to come from, we used to have ideas from newspapers. But anyhow, uh, I'm not covering everything, but um, I will be covering a bit of the things from that. Uh, so, uh, Major Sub, today I want to have a conversation with you uh, for my viewers, for my audience, and that is about a uh, few, uh, few, few topics. Uh, and uh, first of all, what I want to talk with you is uh, about the recent statement uh, which has come from Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zadari uh, that um, we want to engage with India. And um, uh, it was, uh, it, according to him, it, his, he believes that uh, we should talk with India. Uh, we can have differences, but we need to talk. Uh, and the same, he said that uh, Pakistan is uh, disengaged globally and we need to engage with India as well uh, for that matter. But one thing uh, what we ob are observing from Pakistan, Major Sahib, is that be it the incumbent government of Shabash Sharif or this uh, national unity government or the previous government of former Prime Minister Imran Khan, there is a similar pattern in India. And the pattern is not to respond to the offers which come from Pakistan. So how do you th think uh, of that pattern? Do you think that this assessment is fine? Because Prime Minister Imran Khan, former Prime Minister Imran Khan used to uh, write tweets, but there was no response. And now there is an offer a perspective from the incumbent foreign, foreign minister, but uh, Foreign Minister Jay Shankar and the Indian Foreign Office does not respond to that. So how do you see Major Saab that? Thank you, Chima Saab. Uh, Chima Saab, uh, two, three things. First of all, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, if Pakistan truly wants to engage with India, they must stop trying to engage through Twitter or news conferences. I think the best thing would be, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure, uh, Mr. Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has the phone number of uh, Dr. Jashankar. And you can just give him a call and they can talk about it person to person and then announce it. You see, uh, the problem with uh, uh, media based communication is that everybody hears of it. And then people have their own narratives in place. People say that, you know, India is not cooperating or India is cooperating. And why is India behaving like that? Why is Pakistan behaving like that? The best thing is for maybe in one of the maybe in one of the global meetings or maybe in one of the global conferences they can meet on the sidelines and they say that okay you're welcome we extend an invitation to you to come to pakistan similarly india says okay uh, uh, you know bilawal uh, sir you you're welcome to come to india and we will engage with you and let's first have these both of them the foreign ministers talking to each other rather than saying no you see the problem also is chima that uh, a lot of times from Pakistan, India does not know how to, you know, take this and how to analyze this. For example, <clears throat> Mr. Imran Khan has said that uh, there will be no conversation with India until 370 and 35A is, you know, taken back. Now, the problem is that he said that while he was the Prime Minister of Pakistan. So that has become an official Pakistani policy. Now, two months down the line, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari says that, no, 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 what we must do is we must engage with India because Pakistan is becoming globally disengaged and this is not okay. We must, not just India, we must speak to the entire world, which in itself is not a bad idea. I think it's a great idea. I think Pakistan needs to speak to every country, including the state of Israel. Speak to everybody. Speak to everybody, absolutely. Speak to India, speak to everybody. But this speaking must happen one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, there is a lot of trust deficit between the two countries. You don't trust us, we don't trust you, and it's mutual. The idea is speak to each other, you know, uh, speak out of the glare of media because the media in both our countries is very, very judgmental. When you tweet, you know, uh, the Indian government will never respond to a tweet unless it's a friendly tweet. 
and even in case of even in case of uh, uh, Mr. Imran Khan's tweet, where he praised India's foreign policy, there was a certain backlog in which he literally abused the Prime Minister of India. You know, he called him a Nazi, he called him a fascist. He said he's this and that, and Hindutva and radicalized. So he went all out. There are bad memories, and I think if we have to move ahead, I think first both of them need to meet by the sidelines. You know. Somewhere in some meeting, maybe in New York or London or wherever there is a big meeting, both of them go. Since both of them are foreign ministers of sovereign independent countries, go talk to each other over a cup of coffee or over a cup of something better than coffee, whatever you want to have. And then, then, then take it forward and uh, then, uh, you know, uh, then, then maybe come up in front of the media and say that, okay, you know, I, I had a word with Dr. Jashankar and I, I'm going to go to Delhi and I'm going to meet him or he's going to come to Islamabad and meet me. You know, maybe, maybe that is the way forward. Hmm. That's fine. But um, Amir Sahib, uh, obviously, you are right that uh, uh, this should not be, uh, tweet should not be uh, taken as, as a formal gesture from a country for a talks. Uh, and obviously, a call or a letter or something is important. Uh, that's fine. And uh, uh, as far as this issue of 370-35 is concerned, definitely, which you referred that India's thing, the, the former prime minister just clubbed it for as a as a condition for the talks. That many people believe that uh, this is basically a burden which a former prime minister put on uh, on the already troubled relations between India and Pakistan. But one thing we are noticing in in, in New Delhi is that. Uh, uh, and that is that to completely disengage with Pakistan, not to talk with Pakistan. This is a one narrative that is coming. For instance, uh, the foreign doctor, Jay Shankar, was, I think, giving an interview to someone. And he said that uh, we have a problem with the United States. And the problem is that uh, uh, they have been supporting Pakistan unnecessarily and for long um, and for no reason, maybe. So these were some of the lines uh, which have been quoted by media and that have come. So why was the problem with India that if in Pakistan and US have a bilateral relations, even in the past, although the relations were on the more of them or on the security matrix, or it was it was a transactional relations, we always called that uh, it was a bad marriage. It was uh, just for uh, as the transaction stopped, the relationship stopped working. It was not a strategic partnership. So why India believes that a Pakistan US relationship was not a relations uh, is not good for India? Uh, our point of view comes largely from terrorism and what India has suffered uh, across India, but especially in the state of uh, now the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, Chima Sab, uh, you know, this has history and with your permission, I'd like to elaborate a little bit. Now, this has a little bit of history and uh, <clears throat> what has essentially happened is, uh, you know, there were many times when India went to the United States and said that, okay, uh, you have a very close working relationship with Pakistan. And you have a very close working relationship with the Pakistan army. And we have these groups which are operating from inside Pakistan, the lashkar e the jaish Muhammad, uh, the Hezbollah Mujahideen, specifically three of them. And can you do something about it? Because, uh, you know, this is leading to instability. And uh, we've seen we've seen videos of uh, Hafiz Saeed in Pakistan. And those videos are on YouTube. And there is a proper YouTube channel for Jamaatul Dawa. There is a proper YouTube for, you know, uh, Falayat Insanian Foundation and all that. There are YouTube channels. They are on social media. And we know that they're, they're in Lahore, they're in Muridke, they're in so many places, Bahawalpur, etc. Because they go live from there. They go live on Facebook. They, so they're there. Now they've stopped nowadays, but there was a time when they used to, they used to do it regularly. And uh, so India said that, you know, this is this is proof that they're there and they're settled down there. Can you help us? And America said, you know, because America wanted to balance between Pakistan and India. And in, India always had this complaint that uh, you're... You know, you're welcome to have your relationship with Pakistan. But as far as terrorism is concerned, this will bite you also. And you'll be very surprised. When 9-11 happened, there were a lot of Indians who felt very, very sad that, you know, uh, uh, they felt very sad that, uh, you know, such a tragedy had happened in America. And a lot of people were in tears in India. But there was also a realization that maybe, maybe, you know, now America will understand what this is about. Of course, there was a lot of grief. There was a lot of pain for America. But they said that perhaps America will realize what terrorism is about. But because now it has come on its own soil. It has finally arrived on the mainland of the United States of America. So this essentially has got a lot to do with India's complaints against the US basis terror. Now that whole relationship is unraveling uh, between Pakistan and, 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 and America, 
Uh, one, because Pakistan has chosen to be in the Chinese camp. Number two, uh, a lot of things have been said uh, by by uh, Pakistani politicians against the United States of America, especially Imran Khan. Uh, you know, uh, Chima Sab, I, I very strongly feel I don't know why, because it cannot be a coincidence. And I'm just bouncing it off you. I don't even have proof of what I'm saying. You know, I don't have any proof. I'm just saying it like that as, as an analyst. Why should Imran Khan go hammer and tongs after America unnecessarily? Why should he poke America unnecessarily? I, I don't know the logic. Either somebody told him to poke America, all right? Or he really believes what he's saying. I don't know. But uh, as a sitting prime minister, you know, as a sitting prime minister of a country, in the opposition, you can say whatever you wish. But he was talking about an American conspiracy when he was the prime minister of Pakistan. And, uh, you know, the Pakistan Foreign Office, unfortunately, thinks that uh, once somebody has spoken after a few days, like the same Punjabi, na, Miti Pao, it does not happen in foreign relations. That Miti Pao thing does not happen in foreign relations. Once the damage is done, then people will scramble and try to undo the damage and soften the blow, etc. But people have long memories they remember, and this is very recent. So, yes, India feels that the United States of America has not put the kind of pressure on Pakistan vis a vis the Taliban, vis a vis so many other vis a vis, -vis terrorism in India. It could have, and it has not, uh, because it wants to balance the relationship with Pakistan, which is okay, but that is harming India. That's number one. Number two, uh, it is not just about India trying to isolate Pakistan, uh, you know, diplomatically. It's also geographical isolation. Because, Shima Sahib, what is Pakistan's main asset? Pakistan's main asset is not its atom bombs or its nuclear weaponry. Pakistan's main asset is its geostrategic location. That is the biggest gift God has given Pakistan, its geostrategic location. And I think among the two, three countries in the world, are as geostrategically important, uh, important as Pakistan. And India has been requesting Pakistan for a very long time that, you know, uh, please give us the right of way. We'd like to trade with Afghanistan. And there were problems. You know, we are going to check this. Pakistan said, we're going to check this. We load it. It will go on Pakistani trucks. They'll unload it, blah, 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 and all that. And India also feared one thing, that even if Pakistan gave it right, so, uh, right of way through, through, uh, through the Pakistani mainland, whenever a relationship between India and, India and Pakistan went south, Pakistan would simply switch off the tap. After the Salala checkpoint attack, you did it with the Americans, right? If you remember, Pakistan shut down the American movement immediately. Within 24 hours, Pakistan said nothing doing. Khatam. Now, that is not going to happen between India and Pakistan. But let us say something else happens. Because we are not going to attack each other like that. But if something else happens, and India spends billions of dollars in actually focusing trade in one direction, and tomorrow it switches off. So what India did over a period of time was also a created uh, partnerships, created infrastructure so that we can reach Russia, we can reach Afghanistan if we choose to, we can reach Central Asia if we choose to, without coming to uh, Pakistan and without even coming to Afghanistan. Circumvent everything and come. So this part of the world is, you know, uh, India and India is, you, you know, that uh, north south uh, corridor, that thing that is the ply boards and all. I think something has come from Russia, it has reached India. Now, India will also be sending something. So, ideal situation is in the immediate now is around 5 billion US, uh, 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 approximately 5 billion US. That should be the trade. But over a period of time, it's bound to increase. Chima Sab, the only thing is that India is also telling the world that is India's way of telling this is not just for India. It is telling the world that if you want to go to Central Asia, right, you can go through Iran and we will facilitate. So there is also the mainstreaming of Iran also, which is happening. And all this is happening with Pakistan at the back of the mind. That because if we can't go from Pakistan, then we'll go from here. And if we can't go from Pakistan, we'll ensure that the entire world does not go from Pakistan. Everybody should go through Iran. Even if it takes 20 years to do it, we will do it after 20 years. And India has actually invested a lot of money in that. Because everything takes money. India is investing billions upon billions of dollars you know, uh, 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 foreign exchange into this project where we are saying that, okay, uh, the United States of America, you want to go to Afghanistan, you want to go to Central Asia, we'll give you trains, we'll give you a port, we'll give you everything, roads, fantastic roads. You don't have to worry. You'll reach there. You want to go to Afghanistan? No problem. Give us a call. We'll facilitate everything. Because Chima Sahib, America, and this is my analysis, America may have shifted its priorities to Indo-Pacific. 
America may have moved out of Afghanistan in a hurry. But my analysis is one day America will come back to Afghanistan. My analysis is one day America will come back to Afghanistan. This is history. One superpower always comes to Afghanistan, whether it's Russia, whether it's America. During Alexander the Great, the Greeks came. Everybody's been coming to Afghanistan. And the next time a superpower comes to Afghanistan, if Russia comes, Russia will use this. And Russia has its own ways and means to get into it. Russia does not require to come through Pakistan. If America goes, America will go through here. If China goes, then again, it's bad for uh, China can go through the Wakhan corridor. China can go through Pakistan. It has so many ways to go to Afghanistan. But the only problem is China never puts its troops in harm's way in a foreign country. There is no Chinese troop deployment outside its own borders. Chinese don't do that as a matter of policy. And what the Chinese are going to do is the Chinese are going to put pressure on the Pakistan army to guarantee their security inside Afghanistan if the Chinese come. Because they know that the Taliban cannot do it. The Taliban cannot do it. Afghanistan is not. The head of the Taliban is the mayor of Kabul, Chima Saab. He is not the president of, of, of Afghanistan. They are going to get the uh, Pakistani army to guarantee their safety inside. But let's see. Let's see how it fu well, functions. How this is obviously uh, this is something uh, what uh, the India and the United States um, obviously have a dialogue and all that. But Major Saab, since you have mentioned about terrorism, and I think. The same kind of uh, criticism or the assessment, observation, proofs have come from the Pakistani side uh, and they have been given to the United States and to the international community and the UN General Assembly and to the UN Secretary General of the UN General Assembly about uh, when, when, when Pakistan was fighting America's war against terrorism, according to Imran Khan, because he said that this is America's war against terrorism, this is not Pakistan's war against, although we believe this is Pakistan's war against ter terrorism. The Indians were involved in supporting the non-state actors and creating a problem and trouble for Pakistan, be it in Balochistan or Karachi or in FATA or financing non-state actors in Afghanistan to destabilize Pakistan. So that is also a narrative which Pakistan has shared um, with the Americans and the international community and to the P5 particularly as well. Since I'm privy to so many of time uh, about uh, and I have spoken to a few of the people uh, who uh, are or aware of those uh, proofs which were given and they said that obviously there is a substance in it but maybe it's uh, india's uh, global clout india's relation with the p5 maybe the uh, the countries have not spoken much so do you think that uh, yes half a side was involved in afghanistan in uh, in, in in kashmir for the jihad and uh, for that matter there were a un security council resolution on it for, for that matter pakistan has is being removed from the fatf created because he has been punished finally so when american when indians blame the americans you say there is a proof the pakistan is also asking for that the indians are involved in financing terrorism in pakistan so don't you think that this is a sort of a blame game which will continue or do you think that your story is more plausible attractive recognized because taliban because of Ghan government was supporting it even the americans were realizing it but the, the pakistani government has been continuously in the foreign offices continuously be saying that India is sponsoring terrorism in Pakistan and even in Balochistan, even the Kulboshin Yadav episode is there. So how does, uh, what what weightage and what value India's point have uh, in Washington, London, Paris, when such kind of uh, perspective comes from Islamabad? Okay, uh, Chima sir, first of all, I'm not aware of what India is doing in Balochistan. Uh, maybe I read Pakistani media and I hear. So I'm not aware if India is doing anything or not doing anything. I'm not aware of that. Uh, I have two, three quick points to make. Uh, the world recognizes one thing. If something is happening in Kashmir and Hafiz Saeed is a Pakistani national, which means that it is emanating from Pakistan. And even if India is, for example, and I'm not saying India is, but since you are saying it, let me repeat your words. Let us say India is doing something in Balochistan, for example. Even that is being done by Pakistani nationals. In Pakistan, Pakistanis are killing Pakistanis. Uh, and this is, in India, Pakistanis are killing Indians in, in the Kashmir Valley. And of course, there are local Kashmiris also who are part of it. So this is not to say that local Kashmiris are not involved. Of course, local Kashmiris are also involved. Pakistanis also. So this is this is one story, Chima Sab. The second story which uh, which we need to which we need to consider is that uh, you know over a period of time, India 
not only has sent proof to the International Court of Justice, India has sent a lot of recordings, GPS coordinates to Pakistan. And Pakistan also filed FIRs against certain people in Pakistan. I think there are two or three FIRs filed in the 2611 case in, 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 in Pakistani uh, uh, thanas and the matters are sub in Pakistani courts. Our thing is that if relationship between Pakistan and India right, has to improve, like you said, Bilawal Bhutto, that was your first question. Chima sir, this, see, I'll tell you what, first of all, uh, now let me try and put it very delicately because these, these are very important things and, you know, one cannot just uh, say it like that. There has to be a mutual agreement for peace. I'm, I'm trying to say something which, uh, which I hope uh, there has to be uh, 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 the road to peace in Balochistan passes through Kashmir. Uh, uh, how do I say it? You, you, have, you, got it. Was... <laughs> you have said it. <laughs> okay. So the the road to the road to peace in Balochistan passes through Kashmir. You cannot have uh, and uh, I'm not saying that the Indian state is doing anything. All I'm saying is that you cannot have death in Kashmir and peace every. So I think we should. Uh, both of us, uh, you and I, and other people, and just uh, just you know have have friendly relations. That's it. That should be there. Okay, so obviously, so uh, this uh, blame game is still there, and for that matter, obviously, there should be talks and direct talks that are going to bear the result. One last final question, Major Sahib, which I want to ask you, and that is about uh, this recent incident in Gurdwara uh, in uh, in in Afghanistan. Where I was reading that uh, some of the Indian press, particularly I think the Suhasini Hadar and the others in the Hindu, they were mentioning that uh, the Indian deep state may put off a uh, plan to for its um, for its embassy in, in in Kabul or some sort of uh, diplomatic arrangement, which where India was about to start uh, with the Taliban. So, do you think uh, and, and many were calling that as if Pakistan was involved in all that? Do you, don't you think this this will be a new blame game? Because one of the conditions which India has put in front of the Taliban was that the Afghan soil will not be used against India. Earlier, the Pakistan was saying to the Ashraf Ghani government that the Afghan soil will not be used against Pakistan. Now, India is putting the same condition in front of the Taliban that the Afghan soil will not be used against India. So this uh, this attack on the Gurdwara, which, to which obviously Pakistan castigates laments, um, uh, any kind of a terrorist activity by any stakeholder, by any non-state actor. So, how do you think that uh, is this uh, a new tug of war between India and Pakistan in Afghanistan? Do you do you foresee that, or do you see that uh, India will have a fair amount of relations with the Taliban, as the Defense Minister uh, Mullah Yaqub said that we are going to send our soldiers even for training in uh, for in, in India as? Chima sir, uh, there are two three dimensions, and with your permission, I'd like to elaborate. Chima sir, first. First of all, no, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, Daesh or Al Qaeda are fully under the control of any intelligence agency. Be it ISI, be it CIA, be it X Y Z. You know these people are independent operators. Most of them, even Al Qaeda, while there are many foreign fighters, while there are many foreign fighters in Afghanistan, the core of even the Tehreek Taliban Pakistan is basically uh, Diobandi Pashtun. Uh, largely, it's a Deobandi organization, largely Pashtun organization, both TTP and the Afghan Taliban. Number three, uh, you know, India might be engaging with the Taliban today because who do you engage with? But the fact of the matter is Taliban has uh, now has a diplomatic face. But the fact of the matter is that I, their ideology is not very different from Islamic State. Their ideology is not very different from Al-Qaeda. Tehreek Taliban Pakistan which has been attacking Pakistani soldiers. Now, this is no, the TTP is not very different from Al-Qaeda or from Islamic State. So I was very surprised when a Pakistani jirga or delegation went and they said, we'll have talks with the TTP. What you need is zarb You don't need to talk to these guys because you see, they want Pakistan not to exist. And that is their, uh, I'm talking about the Tehreek Taliban Pakistan. So uh, what, and this is not for me to say what Pakistan should do because it's Pakistan's internal matter. But my sensing is to just 
finish these people because they understand the language of violence. They don't understand the language of jirga shirga baithega bachi. They don't understand all that. So these people are animals, right? Now, Chima sahab, aisa hai ki, regarding these six, the unfortunate uh, killing of uh, uh, Sikhs and all that. You know, India had a uh, India had a, this thing called the CA. You must have heard of the CA, CA and RC. Now, the CA was, uh, you know, the Citizenship Amendment Act. And they said that all non, non-Muslims who are in Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, their citizenship for India would be fast-tracked. It was not that they will be given a, a citizenship on arrival, like a visa on arrival, but it would be fast-tracked. So if, if let's say, a Muslim, yes, since it concerns Muslims, I'll say if a Muslim wants to come from these three countries, uh, he would take a certain length of time, but these guys would be given priority, and 2014 was the cutoff date, et cetera, et cetera. This is exactly why it was there, because and now a lot of Muslims in India also protested. They said, why, why, why? This is discriminatory. But you see, Pakistan is a Muslim country. Afghanistan is a Muslim country. Bangladesh is a Muslim country, constitutionally Islamic, right? And uh, we assume that it is safe for Muslims because it is a Muslim country. That, that is, that is uh, in, 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 in Afghanistan's case, that is not true, actually, because Afghans are killing everybody, including Muslims, including non-Muslims. It's not that a blast in Gurdwara has happened. There has been a blast inside a mosque also. And 10 times more number of people have been killed inside mosques than inside Gurdwara. So that is happening in Afghanistan. So the fact of the matter is, I think this is what India needs to do. I have not read Suhasni Heather's article on the Indian deep state saying that this thing, but I don't think India, Chima Saab, is anywhere near opening an embassy in Kabul. I don't think in the near future, unless the world together decides. India will not do it. India will keep on helping. Now, this is a strategic foothold inside Afghanistan. What do the Afghans need today? They need help. They need funding. They need finance. They need food. They need medicines. They need infrastructure. India will keep on doing the same thing that they did in the Ashar Afghani government. The government has changed and nobody can stop India from doing it because India is not giving weapons. India is not sending its troops. India is just sending a plane to Kabul with with, uh, grains, with medicines. And who, who can dispute that? You can't say that, why are you sending medicines to the Afghan people? We're sending medicines to the Afghan people. You can check the medicines. They are medicines only. This is what India is doing. But that buys India a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, this thing, you know. And one thing, I'm very surprised, uh, Chima Saab, on your show, I would like to ask you a question, if with your permission, I can. Uh, Chima Saab, I want to know, China has a border with Afghanistan through the Wakhan corridor. Uh, why is China not doing anything in Afghanistan? China, why is China not sending massive amounts of food grain, massive amounts of medicine? Why is China not doing it? China should also do it. It's a neighbor. It's a neighboring country. Afghanistan and China share a border. Well, I think this is a very important question. Um, immediately, what uh, when India is uh, trying to go with the humanitarian motivation in Afghanistan, uh, naturally, uh, pe- the Chinese and Pakistans don't believe this. Uh, the, the China and Pakistan would believe that Indian presence in Afghanistan is for a geopolitical competition. This is so simple. There is no humanitarian motivation. There is no free lunch in the world. We, the Chinese understand, the Pakistanis understand for that one thing. What you are saying, what referring the Chinese are not uh, putting there, I think uh, the Chinese are not in a position even to understand the Taliban. This is my assessment. I may be wrong. One thing. The Chinese main goal in Afghanistan is to stop any kind of a non-state actor to have any kind of ideological or physical presence in in Xinjiang. So for that matter, whatever the engagement the Chinese did with the Pakistanis or with the Afghan Taliban or with the previous Ashraf Ghani government, that was purely to stop, not to let the Islamists come in, in Xinjiang. So much of the people who were in Afghanistan, particularly if they are from the cent- uh, Central Asian uh, uh, Islamic movement of Uzbekistan and so many others uh, who are in Afghanistan, or even the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda or the TTP or the different factions which were emerging. So Chinese were trying to desist and stop that let's not let them let them not come inside China because uh, that is the Chinese soft valley. They were dealing them. They had this transformation centers in China already to uh, to make those uh, Muslims more Chinese or uh, or to uh, to take away the actual spirit of Islam out of them and to make them the Chinese Muslim, not just the real Arab Muslim or a Pakistani Muslim or that matter. So I think they are just engaged in that matter. One thing. The second, I think uh, they believe that there is no connection. Uh, the, the Afghanistan doesn't connect them with the Central Asia. 
Afghanistan doesn't connect them with any other important country. So for that matter, uh, for the Chinese, Afghanistan is not an important country. And above all, I think uh, all the countries have uh, uh, their time and tested. Uh, they have proven their skills, be it the Soviets and now the Americans, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the West led by America. They have just shown their colors, how things have uh, come out and they don't have. Uh, uh, and above all, there is no, uh, in my understanding, the question answer got a little lengthier. In my understanding, the Chinese believe that there is no center of power in Afghanistan at the moment. So whom to engage with? And I think that doing business in, in Afghanistan is very costly. If you have to the pay to the warlords uh, in one province and the other province, you have to pay to Al-Qaeda. The other province, you have to pay to the Islamic State. And then you have to go in the north and you have to pay to the Northern Alliance or to others. So I think they, 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 don't, they don't get set into uh, any kind of that um, thing. Uh, but I just, although Pakistan has sensitized the Chinese that there are some Baloch militants, uh, who are hiding inside Afghanistan and the Taliban are giving some kind of a support to them. Uh, but I think the Chinese want to keep it uh, or do want to see this all uh, from that lens that the, the Chinese interests are not uh, uh, damaged or compromised uh, whoever uh, comes in Afghanistan. And uh, it doesn't connect China anywhere, I think, in the world. Uh, this is my understanding. And all that uh, connection, what the Chinese need, that they're, they're using it uh, from the CPAC. So going through either either, uh, either Karachi or Gwadar uh, to the Arabian Sea and then uh, to the other, other, other markets. This is my humble submission for this question. No, absolutely. Thank you very much, Chima Sab, <laughs> for the lovely answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mesa, uh, for giving us a wonderful insight uh, for so many questions which we have uh, had for you. And um, hopefully we will continue this series. So uh, have, have your perspective uh, on what's going on in the, in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chima. Thank you.